Hi guys, your video today is going to be over momentum and more specifically momentum and collisions. So we've already kind of talked about this a little bit in class. We talked about the two different kinds. We have elastic collisions and then we have inelastic or perfectly inelastic is the best way to describe that. Now can, momentum is going to be conserved in both of these kinds of collisions. The difference between them is that kinetic energy is only conserved in elastic. Kinetic energy is not conserved in inelastic collisions, only in elastic or only with elastic collisions. So sometimes on the AP exam they will ask you, is this collision elastic or inelastic? And it's very tempting to say one or the other based upon whether or not the objects stick together or bounce apart. But in reality, what they really want you to do is calculate the kinetic energy before and after the collision, and that is your proof. That is how you determine what kind of collision you're looking at. And if you guys don't remember, inelastic, these guys hit and stick together, and uh, elastic is when they hit and bounce off. So with elastic collisions, when we are talking about your kinetic energy before and after, um, we have this expression here. So this is your initial kinetic energy of both objects before equals the final kinetic energy after they collide. So we can combine this with our conservation of momentum equation and we can come up with a way to talk about the object's final and initial velocities without needing to know their masses. So for example, um, they say this, the speed of recession, meaning the speed of the objects after they collide or as they're going away, um, equals the speed of approach. So this is how your book writes it out and it's at the bottom of page 233 if you need um, a visual or you'd like to see where they kind of derived this from. I'm not going to go too terribly into that. I'm just going to give you guys the final expression here. So the difference between the final velocities equals the negative of the difference between the initial velocities. This is a pretty handy dandy expression to have either programmed into your calculator um, or just memorized for test day because uh, it can save you a lot of headache if you understand this relationship with elastic collisions. So um, just to do an example with you, so let's say we have a four kilogram block and it's moving to the right at six meters per second and it's going to collide with a two kilogram block moving to the right at three meters per second. Um, and I want to know what are their final velocities. So what's the final velocity of this guy and what's the final velocity of this guy. Um, typically we would need to know a little bit more than this. We would need to know one of their final speeds but because we have this relationship and we know that the difference between the final equals the negative of the difference between the initial, we can uh, solve this pretty easily. So the first thing um, we have to do is figure out this. Sorry, let me extend the page down here a little bit so we have some room. All right, so initially V2i minus V1i. If we take this to be our first mass and this to be our second, then this is going to be 3 minus 6, which is negative 3. So our formula says V2f minus V1, ooh, V1f equals the negative of negative 3, which in this case is going to give us 3. So how does that help us? Well, we know that initially we have a certain amount of momentum, and our momentum is going to be 4 
times 6 plus 2 times 3, which in this case will be 30. And we know conservation and momentum principles that after these two blocks collide, 4v1f plus 2v2f has to equal 30 as well. So if we put this difference here of 3, we say V2F minus V1F equals 3. So we can do a little bit of equation substitution, and we can say V2F equals 3 plus V1F. And we can substitute this expression into our first one. And we get 4v1f plus 2 times 3 plus v1f equals 30. So that's going to be 6v1f plus 6 equals 30. Subtract 6 from both sides, divide by 6. We get our final speed of our first block to be 4 meters per second. Now once I get 4, I can come up here and plug that into this. Um, here, sorry. And I can figure out that my V2F has to be 7. Alright, so that's a way to figure out the final velocities of both objects, um, even though we don't know the final velocity of one of them. So the only other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about in this video is the idea of conservation of momentum happening with situations that are not linear. So rather conservation of momentum in 2D or even 3D situations. So you guys uh, probably all played pool at some point in time. But if you have an object here that's initially at rest, and you have another object that's coming in to hit that first one at an angle. Um, momentum in the x direction is conserved. Momentum in the y direction is conserved. And they're conserved separately. So what that means is um, the following. I'll do a quick um, little question for you guys right here. So let's say the mass of this guy is 2 and the mass of this guy is um, so what that means is that if this object is coming in at an angle, we'll call this 30 degrees, to hit this block, and let's say it's going at 4 meters per second, then that means I would need to calculate its momentum in the x direction, I would need to calculate its momentum in the y direction, and those two values are going to be conserved after the collision. So the momentum in the x direction in this case is going to be 2, because that's his mass, times whatever the x component of its velocity is. So that would be 4 times cosine 30, which is 3.5. So in this case, the momentum in the x direction is 7 kilograms per meters per second, and the momentum in the y direction should be 2 times uh, 2 times 2 because that's going to be this side and this is 3.5 which is going to be 4 kilograms times meters per second. Okay so now that I know my momentum in the x and the y if I knew a little bit maybe about what was happening with this block after it um, collided with this guy so we can continue this problem on a little bit further and say that after they collide, this ball is going to come up here at an angle of 10 degrees, and let's say it's going to go 2 meters per second. So if I knew the uh, angle at which this block was, or this ball was going to recoil off of this collision, and I knew the angle it was going to make, I could calculate the x and y momentum of this ball and know that that had to equal or had to add up with the x and y momentum of this ball to be 7 and 4. Um, there's a, let me try to 
to see if there's an example in your textbook we can look at as well. So an example of this we can do that's pretty straightforward mathematics wise is to look at an inelastic collision. So let's say you have a ball of mass to 5 kilograms and it's going directly this way and then we have a ball of mass 10 kilograms here and it's traveling 5 meters per second and it's going this way uh, let's do 5 meters per second here and this is going to be inelastic so these guys are going to hit and stick together and I want to know um, what their final uh, velocity of the wreckage is going to be so or final velocity after they collide so this guy's initial momentum is going to be 25 meters per second and that's going in the x direction and then this guy is going to have a momentum of 50 kilograms per meters per second and that's going in the y direction so y and x still have to be conserved so that means that after they collide it's going to be going 25 kilograms times meters per second in the x direction for momentum and it's going to be going 50 kilograms per meters per second in the y direction so I can do a little Pythagorean theorem here and figure out what my actual resultant momentum is going to be so 50 squared plus 25 squared that means my the final oh I have the square root at the final momentum is going to be 56 kilograms times meters per second now that just tells me my momentum it doesn't tell me anything about my velocity in order to find my final velocity I would have to take this and divide it by both of those masses added together because it's an inelastic collision so they are going to stick together so the final velocity is 3.7 meters per second and those are the only examples I want to talk about with you guys today so uh, see you all tomorrow